Well, for more on the breaking news that BlackBerry CEO John Chen is leaving the company effective November 4th, uh, we'll connect now with technology analyst Carmi Levy. Uh, Carmi, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon on this news. We were wondering what was going to happen following the end of John Chen's uh, contract. It had, it had been extended to, you know, this 10-year this length. What do you make of the news of his departure? I'm not at all surprised. I mean, he was telegraphing this in the lead up to the official announcement. I think he kind of knew the end was coming. Based on where the company is at, clearly an inflection point in its history. You know, the, the way it was doing business, clearly no longer working. Major change was necessary, spinning off uh, potentially part of its uh, in-car technology business, cybersecurity business, not living up to expectations. You put it all together and it was pretty obvious. A chapter was ending, a new chapter would soon be beginning uh, and old leadership there's just no room for him in that sort of place anymore yeah it, it, it is interesting because when you rewind 10 years ago and John Chen was joining the company he was joining the company to start a new chapter as well to, to turn things around mm -hmm. and, and we've talked about this a bit before Carmi but I, I wonder if you you know looking at those 10 years if you know and John Chen looking at those 10 years whether he thinks that um, you know he achieved what he could with the company over that period of time I think he would probably feel that he did the best that he could with what he had, but it was not mission accomplished. It was mission partially accomplished, certainly in comparison to his previous experience at Sybase, where it was a monumental turnaround, huge sellout, uh, and you know an, an absolute success by every definition. That wasn't the case here. Uh, under John Chen's watch, the smartphone business was essentially shuttered. They moved on from it. The, the collecting revenues from service uh, operations also came to an end, and they sold off a lot of their intellectual property and so and as they did that what was supposed to take over from that simply didn't materialize to the degree that you would expect of an acknowledged turnaround expert so he succeeded in terms of shepherding the company off of its previous businesses but in terms of repeating the wild success that he had previously as the acknowledged turnaround turnaround expert in the industry it simply didn't happen and i think it made sense that at the age of 68 he was closing a chapter and he wasn't going to be opening up a new one i wonder what you make of uh richard lynch as the interim ceo for the company i mean maybe that is very interim maybe it's short term and they they move they find uh, uh someone to replace john chen uh, longer term but uh, uh richard lynch he joined blackberry's board in in 2013 and uh, he previously served as the executive vice president and chief technology officer of Verizon Communications and Verizon Wireless. I think they needed someone with an interim uh, you know, name uh, on the door. Uh, he will stay the course until they can find someone permanent. I don't see him sticking around in that role for that. They wanted someone with depth at BlackBerry. In other words, convince BlackBerry employees and stakeholders that there is continuity, there is stability while we figure out what comes next. I am kind of surprised given that none of this does come as a surprise that they didn't figure this out beforehand. In other words, maybe uh, you know, as John Chen was preparing to head for the egg, it have an executive search process already executing in that process now is not the time it's a little bit late and mm. having an interim title on the door it strikes me as being a little bit behind the curve is there anyone um, or you know type of person that you think would be necessary to be taking over this role well, I mean, it's interesting because Mr. Lynch is, and you know, his 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 depth, his foundation is in telecom. Clearly, this is not the company's focus going forward. It's automotive. It's automotive technology, QNX, uh, Internet of Things, and so bring in someone from that space. Bring in someone at a much earlier point uh, in their career trajectory, who, just like Mr. Chen was when he started in 2013, succeeding Torsten Heinz, um, is you know ready for that next major challenge. Does have a bit of a track record, but certainly has the energy to see it through. So change industries, go a lot younger and make sure that it's someone with a track record to make the hard decisions to make the QNX division uh, succeed to its potential. Because even now, things are starting to soften and, you know, the jewel in the crown isn't quite the jewel. They don't have a lot of time to figure that out. And I guess maybe looking for two CEOs, right, Carmi, if they're, if they're splitting the company up. 
Yeah, we we haven't seen a whole lot of details yeah. beyond what that will look like, and certainly, you know, I and, and I think they will uh, because obviously these are two very different business types. You cannot have them under common leadership. It demands a very different demeanor. Uh, in terms of both who's at the helm and who is the team that is supporting that individual as they execute on that business's future. Uh, right now, they've tried to handle it all kind of in-house under one umbrella. It's just not working.